You're watching Plants and Politics with Gina Bonanno Limos. If you're ready to hear the truth about both sides of the aisle, what's really going on in America, and how big money interests prevent change to keep you sick, broke, and desperate, then play on. Hey everybody, welcome to Plants and Politics. This is Gina and I am super excited today about my guest. She is someone I consider to be a Shiro of mine. Um, so, <laughs> and you probably heard giggling about that. Um, Jane Velez Mitchell is with us today. Jane is an Emmy Award winning journalist. She's a documentary filmmaker. She's the best selling author of four books. She previously hosted her own show and anchored on CNN, KCAL, as well as WCBS. Um, she's now the founder and content editor, which I probably don't even have to tell you of Jane Unchained News Network, which provides original content and news stories about um, animal rights and the vegan lifestyle. She's won numerous awards, prestigious awards for her reporting on animal rights issues, and she's a four-time recipient of the Genesis Award from the Humane Society of the United States. So Welcome, Jane Velez Mitchell. I'm so excited to have you here. I'm honored that you came on my show. Um, and please say hello to everybody. <laughs> well, hello, and we've got so much to talk about. Let's dive in. Oh, absolutely. So first thing, you are just beyond busy right now. I mean, beyond just Jane Unchained, you have now this new show, New Day, New Chef. So I'd love for you to tell everybody about that. It's on Amazon Prime. Yes, and we have a new season, New Day, New Chef Support and Feed Edition. So if you're an Amazon Prime member, it's free for Prime members. Uh, the first season was New Day, New Chef. Now we have a new season, Support and Feed, which uh, is a partnership between Jane Unchained, our nonprofit, and Maggie Baird's organization, Support and Feed which she's a committed vegan. She also happens to be the mother of Billie Eilish and Phineas, and they make appearances on the show. And Maggie Barrett is one of the stars of the show. And basically we outline how Support and Feed is keeping vegan restaurants open in Los Angeles, New York, Philadelphia, and also on supportandfeed.com. It provides a template for any city anywhere to join and keep these vegan restaurants open while feeding those most in need the kind of food they really need, not the garbage and the junk that uh, other so-called you know, hunger organizations are feeding them. And so uh, what we do is we follow her and we profile uh, half a dozen of the chefs, seven of the chefs actually, that are part of the Los Angeles Support and Feed. So that includes a Sun Cafe and Jackfruit Cafe and Yoga Ert and, um, uh, PBJ LA, which was based in the central market when that reopens, God willing, mm -hmm. uh, that'll be part of it. Mm -hmm. And um, Pura Vita, which is an incredible vegan uh, Italian restaurant in West Hollywood. And so there's a whole bunch of Sage Bistro. We profile them. They make an incredible mm -hmm. black bean burrito with pickled cabbage. So what we did was we showed all these incredible dishes that are being made mm -hmm. and then delivered to homeless shelters, children's shelters, uh, women's abuse shelters, um, senior citizen centers, giving them the food they need because right yeah. now they don't need meat and dairy. Yeah. The fact is people coming down with COVID-19 have a greater chance of dying if they have underlying health conditions like heart disease and diabetes. Uh, and we know that uh, a plant-based diet is very effective in preventing and reversing mm -hmm. 12 out of the 14 leading killers. So it's crazy that these so-called hunger organizations are feeding uh, animal products to people for a number of reasons. The climate change impact, the carbon footprint, um, the water use, uh, 
a burger uses 90 percent more mm -hmm. uh water than a, a vegan alternative yeah. uh and of course the fact that we even have world hunger in this world is because of animal agriculture which yeah. they eat the most of the food you know yeah. 75 percent of all the soy produced is fed to farm animals right yeah we could just cut out the middleman <laughs> being the animals you know spare their lives and feed that food the, the food that's going to them we can food, feed directly to humans yeah and so i just wanted to say i would really appreciate everybody to just go to amazon prime type in support and feed and watch the show because obviously the more people watch it the more people who then write reviews the mm -hmm. higher it is and then we can expose it more to uh what i call pre-vegans so mm -hmm. support and feed amazon prime people are at home don't go out don't go partying the fourth of july stay at home stay safe and watch support and feed on amazon prime <laughs> or all the holidays so support and feed is its own separate show or is it part of new day new chef it's the second season it's a okay. special edition of new day new chef support and feed edition okay but okay. support and feed uh if you just type that in it'll come up because it's the okay. only show associated with it so just put okay. in support and feed and it should come up or we can just you can just click on the link that's associated with this uh broadcast here Okay, perfect. Yes, I will drop links below the videos and below the podcast in the description box. For everybody watching everything that we're going to talk about today, you will be able to find links um, to Jane Unchained, to everything. So that's awesome. So it supports the restaurants to help keep them afloat during this horrible time that we're all living through. And then it feeds the people who need food. So that exactly. is incredible. And, and it so, also exposes first responders like doctors and nurses and paramedics and firefighters to vegan food. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them were blown away because these are some of the top vegan restaurants in LA making the food. Yeah. And you know, these poor doctors, nurses, paramedics, and firefighters are often left to just grab a candy bar somewhere or junk food. Yeah. And so now we're giving them really top of the line vegan food through support and feed. Um, how incredible is that? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I, I think it blows people away when they have really good vegan food, <laughs> you know? Because yeah. their, their perception of what vegan food is is often just tofu and salad. And I mean, that's what I thought it was, <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, you can have a lot. Of, we, we make some gourmet food. Roasted oh, yeah. vegetables and a butternut squash coolis with mm -hmm. vegan feta cheese. I mean, we have incredible recipes that we outline. Oh yeah, I saw uh, with um, Dotsie Bausch on the first episode. Um, she yeah. made that bowl had, you know, my mouth watering. Yeah, <laughs> so. great. And by the way, we have a lot of fun stars on this support and feed edition of New Day, New Chef. We have, uh, you, you know, Downton Abbey, the woman who plays the cook, Mrs. Patmore. Mm -hmm. Why do we need a refrigerator? <laughs> um, uh, she's a vegan, Leslie oh, Nittle, wow. the award-winning actress, and she's on. And we also have uh, Elaine Hendricks, who's Alexis mm -hmm. Carrington on Dynasty. And we have Georgia Fox on CSI. And so we have a lot of stars. We have um, Emily DeRobin from Lost, uh, Katie Clary, Mark Thompson. Mm -hmm. So we got tons of stars on this, along with Maggie Baird and as I mentioned, Billie Eilish and Phineas make a, a cameo appearance. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. So now the other thing I wanted to ask you about, because like I said, you are so, so busy. Oh, and by the way, um, for anybody who hasn't seen it yet, my favorite thing on New Day, New Chef is the blender dance. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the best. <laughs> so. Yeah, uh, it's my favorite yeah. thing too. You know, I just yeah. love it. I'm just going to tease that so anybody who hasn't watched it, now you got to go watch because you got to go see the blender dance. Oh, yeah. That's oh, all yeah. I'm going to say. That's all I'm saying about it. Um, <laughs> so you also, um, this morning I was watching you. I was watching you on your show with uh, Amawale and I think you had Vegan G and somebody else on there. Um, forgive me, I, I forget, you know, you, you had yeah, a few not guests, right I forget everybody's name. But you were talking about boycott meat. So you've got this whole movement going with Boycott Meat, which of course you and I have been doing that already for many years. Um, but 
tell me about this. What, what, what yeah, is well, what happened was obviously the slaughterhouses have become the hotbeds, one of the mm -hmm. top hotbeds of the COVID-19 outbreak. And so slaughterhouse workers are dying. Mm -hmm. And um, President Trump used the Defense Protection Act to declare slaughterhouses critical infrastructure, meaning that these workers are considered essential workers. It robs them of a lot of their legal protections. Yeah. And the um, cynical aspect of that is that even though the meat industry was like, we are, we're gonna have a food crisis, they were exporting a lot of the meat overseas, mm -hmm. even as they forced these workers to go in there under the Defense Protection Act, and now they're dying. As of June 24th, 99 slaughterhouse workers have died. That's the reported deaths from COVID-19. We know that quite often, generally, there are many unreported COVID deaths, and many, many others are sick. Mm -hmm. So this is not an essential industry. Yeah. Uh, clearly, you don't eat meat, I don't eat meat, I haven't eaten meat in 24 hours, and people are always telling me, calm down, I have too much energy. <laughs> and uh, please, <laughs> chill out. And I do have a tremendous amount of energy from morning till night, and so do most of the vegans I know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're living proof that meat is not essential. So essentially, when people eat a chicken wing or a hot dog or a slice of ham, they are very possibly co-signing the death of mm -hmm. a human being. And so these slaughterhouses have become slaughterhouses for people. So some workers' rights advocates in Iowa contacted me mm -hmm. and uh, they said, we want to do a meat boycott. We already launched one in May, Meatless May, but we want to expand it nationwide for the infinite future the indefinite future. And I was like, I'm there. Wow, that's awesome. Here's the thing, all these humani so-called humanitarians who you know, are very condescending to the animal rights movement. Oh, I love your passion, but mm -hmm. I care about people. Mm -hmm. Well now, guess what? <laughs> yeah. Now, if you're eating animals, you are very likely co-signing, very possibly co-signing the death and certainly the exploitation mm -hmm. of slaughterhouse workers who the conditions that they work in have been revealed now because the national focus is on them. Mm -hmm. And horror stories like Oxfam reported that slaughterhouse workers often have to wear adult diapers because they are not given proper bathroom breaks. Yeah. So they have to urinate in their pants. Right, right. This and, is yeah. shame, shame on us as yeah. a society. But I mean, Yes, we're, we're dealing with this COVID thing and this is affecting them and it's, it's harming them and killing many of them. But if you've been eating meat, you've been co-signing the death of people anyway. I mean, based on climate change, I mean, so this is nothing new, but now it's in the spotlight more. Well, but it's an additional killing right, right there. Right. It's not just a killing of yeah, it's more theoretical, the face. theoretical people that might exist around the world or the planet. It's like, you know, right. Jose Lopez, I'm just making up a name. Yeah. Yeah. And, and many of these the workers images. are afraid to go, come forward and complain about the conditions, I'm sure, because there are a lot of undocumented workers. So <coughs> it puts them at risk even more so. Now, don't you think, you know, I, I did hear that we, we subsidize $38 billion a year to the meat and dairy industry. The meat and dairy and industry is circling the drain right now because schools are closed and they're not shoving this garbage down the throats of school children. Yeah. So the only way the dairy industry exists is through government subsidies. They have cheese caves, they, they sell this, they, they give it to prisons, they prisoners, school kids. So now that schools have been closed because of COVID-19, Parents are making smarter choices. Meat sale, uh, dairy sales, dairy is in crisis. Oh, and yeah. we need to let dairy die. Yeah. We need to let dairy go away. We're not cows. We shouldn't be drinking the breast milk of another species. It's crazy. Yeah. It's horrible for humans. It's horrible for animals. It's horrible for the planet. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not brain surgery. You know, I look at some of these so-called progressive liberal commentators and 
I actually wrote an email to Rachel Maddow and I complimented her for talking about the meat packing plants. They don't want to say slaughterhouse because mm -hmm. that would that would kind of make people think about, hmm, animals are slaughtered there. Now let's call it meat packing plants, like we're packing up some meat to go to a go on a trip. Yeah. Um, but I did compliment her. I said, congratulations on your courageous coverage of the slaughterhouse uh, crisis with COVID-19. So you got to give people props for doing the right thing because I'm sure the meat industry wasn't thrilled even, even calling it meat packing. Mm -hmm. Night after night, she was talking about the fact that slaughterhouses are the vectors of this uh, virus. Mm -hmm. But I pointed out to her, I said, at one point you said something like, nobody disputes that this is important and these are essential. I said, yes, we do. Millions of yeah. people dispute that. And yeah. there are millions of people. Then I outlined all the horrible things that are the result, you know, the destruction of the Amazon, climate change, uh, water pollution, uh, drought, uh, mm -hmm. human hunger, uh, human disease, mm -hmm. and uh, who knows? Now everybody's on other issues with the COVID-19, people going to beaches, but I do feel that it raised the issue of look at what's happening. The farmers have had to come to terms with what they do. They can't just wave their pigs goodbye and put them on a truck. They have to kill them themselves in a lot of cases. Yeah. And that is some of the most horrific footage ever recorded is this so-called euthanasia, which is anything but euthanasia. Yeah. It's really something out of a slasher movie. It is the yeah. most disgusting footage. So um, yeah. I think that we're having a wake-up call. This, this is a moment, uh, a turning point in history. And I think that we have a good opportunity to, to alert people that it's not in their self-interest to eat animals. Not to mention that with the COVID outbreak so so prevalent in the slaughterhouses and these workers, and we heard testimony to this effect as part of the boycott meat doc campaign at boycottmeat.com. You can sign up, boycottmeat.com, is that the workers are in these horrible outfits now, like these hazmat suits, and they're wearing this plastic covering and they're wearing glasses and they're sweating. Mm -hmm. Guess what they're sweating onto? Yeah. The food, the, the, the dead, the yeah. meat. Yeah. So who's to say that the meat is not carrying COVID-19 into the supermarkets? Mm -hmm. if they're yeah. sweating onto the food, the so-called yeah. food. I don't call it food, but the, yeah. the, the animal carcasses. part. Carcasses, yeah. The carcasses. Yeah. Yeah. And you said something interesting. I mean, you said a lot of interesting things this morning, but one thing really caught my attention. You were talking about how when you watch TV, all you see is meat, dairy, big pharma. Yeah. Right? I kind of look at them all as intertwined. Because, sure. I mean, don't you, this is my thought and I get your opinion. I kind of think that big pharma loves the fact that people are eating animal products. because As long as they can keep people sick, there's a need for their products. Of course, of course. Uh, you know, What the Health, the documentary by Kip Anderson documented mm -hmm. that very clearly where the woman runs out of the hospital where they do stent operations and she says, I can't talk to you. This is our business. Follow the money. Yeah. Uh, they wouldn't be able to sell the cholesterol lo lowering pills, the erectile dysfunction pills, the this mm -hmm. pills, the that pills, because people would be healthier. Yeah. And uh, I can't All even watch television. I have to mute the commercials because they're so disgusting, the side effects. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Wow. I mean, it's just like, is everybody X, Y, Z, you know, just gross stuff. Yeah. And um, so, you know, we're a very sick society right now, but this is an opportunity for change. And uh, one of the things that, another one of our initiatives at Jane Unchained, by the way, <clears throat> Jane Unchained News Network is a 501c3 nonprofit. So if you want to support us, because we do all of this, um, really, we don't have my, this is Jane Unchained World Headquarters, my apartment, <laughs> you know, um, we do everything as on the, just everything goes right to the, right to the cause of getting the word out. And um, so support us, you know, uh, we, we, um, we don't want to waste time with giant fundraisers and mm -hmm. all of that. I threw one fundraiser once with a couple of other groups and I, I was like, I'd rather take, take my life savings and to avoid <laughs> that again. Yeah. Uh, that, was, that was brutal. Those fundraisers are difficult, really difficult. And uh, 
anyway, uh, yeah, what we you, prefer you is people just you interest know. funding you because then they're going to tell you what you can and can't expose course, and yeah, what you yeah. can and can't say. Of course not. So anybody who wants to, you know, go to janeunchained.com slash donate and help us even $10 a month, you know, mm -hmm. it, it all, it's all good. So, um, one of the other things that's one of our new initiatives. Okay. So COVID-19 hit. We had a lot of plans. We were going live. We have 70 volunteer citizen journalist contributors around the world going live. We have them in Europe. We have them in Latin America. We have them all across coast to coast, New York, LA, Chicago. So COVID-19 hit and that kind mm -hmm. of, well, we're not going to VegFest because VegFests aren't happening. We're not going live at vegan. Well, we are going live at a couple. There's a couple of vegan restaurants that open. And you know, I tell all the contributors, stay safe, wear a mask, stay home. Mm -hmm. Nothing is worth it. But if people go out and they're going to do that, we've had a couple of profiles of um, restaurants and mm -hmm. a couple of vigils. And, uh, but, but I'd say 99% of our coverage is now switched. And we created anchors, news anchors, mm -hmm. because I realized, A, there's so many things happening in the vegan world. I can't cover them all. And since people can't go up out, let's make them anchors. So we have the business hour with Elizabeth Alfano. We have mm -hmm. a rescue uh, show with uh, Lindsay Baker. We have uh, Naja Wright Brown, who's the uh, owner of Land of Cushion Baltimore. She does a show um about food and african-american business initiatives we have um uh paige parsons roach and her friend sherry johnson who do plant-based in the burbs we have the laws that matter a top vegan attorney who runs b veg vegan certification company and she does a great show she's vegan from birth believe it or not wow and uh so i could be here all day listening we got about a dozen shows mm -hmm. and uh it's, it's all very exciting. A travel show. Um, we have our friend Melissa Breslow does a, a vegan-oriented um, sound bath. So uh, we're having a lot of fun with those. And we also started something that I had been working on for a while, but decided to accelerate it because of COVID-19. And it's, it's basically a connector, an app that connects plant-based people, vegan people, Mm -hmm. And also vegan wannabes. So it's called Plant Based Neighbor. I urge everybody wow. to sign up, plantbasedneighbor.com. We're in beta testing right now. Mm -hmm. And then after we work out all the issues, because every time somebody signs up, the developers get to see, okay, are they having trouble with this, that, and the other? We're refining it right now. And then we're going to launch it as a full scale app mm -hmm. um, later this summer. So this is going to connect vegans with other vegans in their neighborhood, but we're not exclusive because we don't want veganism to be an exclusive club. We want everybody in the world to be vegan. Okay. So that we wouldn't even have to identify ourselves as vegan. We would just say, somebody could say maybe the rare non-vegan would say, I'm a, I don't know what we'd call them. Anyway. So uh, if you go to plantbasedneighbor.com, it's right now it's a website, but we okay. want to get a lot of people signed up. And you put your photo and then you can invite people who you know who are vegan in your neighborhood. And so we want to build this up now when this eventually ends, mm -hmm. um, we want to be able to encourage vegan block parties, vegan 4th of July parties, mm -hmm. vegan carpooling, um, all sorts of things where these vegans can get together, but not keep non-vegans out or pre-vegans. We have three tiers, vegan, on the journey, veg, curious, so that this would actually allow the opportunity for people to mentor people in their neighborhood. Oh, Much as I've done with my next door neighbor who was initially very suspicious about my veganism, <laughs> and then uh, with the Beyond Meat IPO, which changed a lot of people's minds because in this society, mm -hmm. money talks, and it was the most mm -hmm. successful initial public offering since the 2008 financial crisis, about a, it was just over a year ago. He started taking a look at it because he's a money guy. And then he said, you know, the one I really like, it tastes just like meat is impossible. And uh, so he started buying that. Then it was very gradual, but I was mm -hmm. mentoring him and just encouraging him. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the other day he said to me, do you have plant-based delivery companies you can recommend? Oh. And so I gave him a list. I wrote a whole bunch. Now, that's the kind of interaction we can have with people mm -hmm. who are veg curious mm -hmm. on the journey in our neighborhood. So sign up to plantbasedneighbor.com. That's awesome. 
That's awesome. When do you think the actual app will be fully formed and ready for everybody? I would say, you know, we don't want to rush. We wanted to rush it out because of COVID. Because frankly, I got a call from a friend who was in Northern California and she was very down and she felt very isolated. She said, I'm surrounded by hunters and, mm -hmm. and factory farms and meat eaters and I'm alone. And that's when I called the developers and I go, look guys, with, um, with COVID-19, we've got to step up we've got to step up the pace. So we rushed it out there to be on the website. So it really, everybody could help mm -hmm. by signing up because the way they learn how to improve and tweak is when people go on and they can see that they've had a problem adding their photo or adding a background mm -hmm. or um, they don't understand something. And then, so really, if, if, if we get people to sign up to plantbasedneighbor.com, I would mm -hmm. say, Sometime in August, late August, we might be able to launch it as a full scale app. Okay. Okay. And I will drop a link to that as well. Thank you. So what you need is, is user feedback so that you can exactly. tweak it and refine it and make it exactly yeah, what you want. And exactly. And, and okay. you know, people really love the idea. I'll tell you what happened. I was at, if you're interested in the story of how this came about. So I was at a dinner at Nick's, which is a great uh, vegan restaurant in West Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was Judy Mancuso who runs social compassion legislation. And she does these big dinners when she has a major victory on legislation to bring some of her donors and people together. Mm -hmm. So I happen to be sitting next to her nephew, John Mancuso. And he's a great guy. He's a surfer and he's a software developer. And then the conversation turned to... Um, <clears throat> people in our neighborhood and lost dogs. And somebody said, uh, you know, we need something that would be kind of similar to like a next door, but we need it for vegans. Mm -hmm. And um, this is not that similar to next door, by the way, just let you know next door. <laughs> <laughs> um, but everybody said, that's a great idea. Like in unison, everybody at the table was like, wow, that's a great idea. Somebody needs mm -hmm. to do that. So then John said, well, it's funny you mentioned that because I'm developing something just like that for musicians. And I've been developing it for a while now. I could probably duplicate the basic infrastructure and apply it to vegans. Oh, wow. So I was like, great, because that saves us a lot of time. Yeah. And uh, so that's exactly what happened. And then he was going along and, you know, sort of a non rush paced. And then when mm -hmm. the COVID hit, uh, I called them up after talking to my friend and I said, we got to do this. We got to do this right away. That's when we decided to launch it as a website that'll accelerate the process with the user feedback to plantbasedneighbor.com. Right. Okay. And then other than connecting people, are there any other features? Are there recipes on the app? Are there... Well, there's ads, and right now we're giving okay. free ads to everybody who wants, every vegan, we're never gonna advertise anything that's not vegan, mm -hmm. but um, we have a whole bunch of ads that will run for free, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there's a lot of ways to connect. I mean, we're gonna build it, as I said, uh, but just to reaffirm that a lot of the things that it would be great for uh, will become apparent when we're allowed to socialize with our neighbors. Right. <laughs> like, I'll give you an example. Okay. Fourth of July, you know, it's not, it's, I try to make it happy. I'm going to do a lunch mm -hmm. break live, which is our daily vegan cooking show that we've been doing for several years now, never mm -hmm. missing a day. We don't miss holidays, whether it's New Year's Eve, Christmas, Hanukkah, mm -hmm. Fourth of July, Labor Day, we're always live. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to be doing a live interview trying to hook it up at my barbecue, making some veggie burgers while I'm gonna be interviewing a vegan singer, Lisa Barca in Arizona. And that's happening on 4th of July. So um, in any case, I don't think, I'm praying that there won't be a lot of celebrations here for health reasons, because we're in a crisis. Mm -hmm. and we don't want people out. And I got some neighbors here who have parties every Friday night and they're drinking and I'm thinking, oh God, you know, young yeah. people, not smart. I have yeah. quite a mask, an N95 mask. Um, in any case, um, let's say we didn't have the virus. Mm -hmm. Well, instead of me being surrounded by people who are just cooking up dead flesh and that smell hitting me, mm -hmm. I could reach out to my vegan neighbor, say, hey, we're gonna have a vegan cookout 
at here's my place, you're all invited, and bring some neighbors mm -hmm. so they can try it. Or what about a vegan block party? Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, people put out their grills in public and uh, right here, right where I live, I got some people put their grill right in the street, taxpayer funded street, and they're grilling animals. I can't stop them, yeah. but I can hold a vegan. I could do the same thing with my grill and put it out there and have a vegan um, barbecue and give, give stuff away and, and mm -hmm. show people. So this is gonna help people connect. I've already, just using it myself as a neighbor, I put it on, oh, here's a funny story. Uh, one of our IG guy, Kenzaya Rubens, who lives in downtown LA, he goes, well, it's no point me signing up. There's not gonna be anybody in downtown LA. I said, just do it, Kenzie. <laughs> he found 162 people wow. in his area. Oh, that's cool. Now, how, how large of an area does it? We're doing zip codes right now, oh, okay. but as it gets more populated, we're gonna be able to narrow it down. Okay. So right now, oh, by the way, it was first, it was just the United States and now it's going global. Oh, He's figured out a way. I, I'm not beautiful. saying that, you know, in Siberia, you're gonna be able to get it, but it's, mm -hmm. I think you can do it in Canada and other places and hopefully Europe. So, uh, but, but we're focusing on the United States right now. So that was a shock. He was shocked. He called me back and he was like, oh my God, 162 people. <laughs> I said, and you thought there'd be nobody. And we just launched it like a couple wow. of days earlier. Oh, so wow. it's really, so I already um, benefited from it because I, I know of two vegan neighbors. So I ran into one, I said, Jeff, sign up for this. <laughs> so he signed up and then he posted a video because you can post videos. Oh, cool. And he said, because he's a videographer, he goes, this is one of my favorite marches ever. And it showed this guy, Gaia, Gaia, uh -huh. uh, who's a vegan rap artist marching at a, at a vegan march that I was also attending the same march, but he caught the rap that this guy did that was so great. And it was like out of a movie, you know, he's wow. rapping and there's giant speakers and there's thousands of people marching. And I was like, wow, Jeff, this is incredible footage. We should do a documentary. So now I've, I've enlisted him to do another documentary. Would I, would he have shown me that? If, yeah. if, there's a connection to neighbors. Let's mm -hmm. face it. I didn't really choose any of my neighbors, but now during COVID-19, I'm getting to know them. Yeah, <laughs> um, for better or worse. Now there, I actually am really <laughs> blessed to have great neighbors. I'm kidding around, but you know, I, I'm getting to know them. They're the only people I have to talk to, you know, yeah. get to know them. And um, so this way we, I think we can feel less isolated and we can mm -hmm. mobilize and Imagine, think about tentacles, right? Like lines mm -hmm. throughout the whole, if we connect like a web, we're unstoppable. Oh, Plantbasednaybor.com, yeah. sign up. Okay, yeah, I will drop the link to that. Yeah, I, I said the same thing to somebody the other day. I said, you know, you never know what your impact is gonna be. You know, there's times that I've felt like, oh, I'm not reaching as many people as I, I want to and need to, to you know, for people, for animals, for the planet, but then you, you talk to somebody and they, oh my gosh, so-and-so had your book or so, you know, and like I was saying to somebody the other day, the person who told me about veganism, if she had no idea what I was, you know, that I was going to become vegan and write a book and be here with you and, <laughs> you know, so many other wonderful things. So yeah, you just never know. It, it you're really you're incredible. You you approach it from the health angle, and I think mm -hmm. you no know, different people respond to different things. I was shamed into going vegan. I was a vegetarian, mm -hmm. and I've been vegan about 24 years. I got sober 25 years ago in April, last April, mm -hmm. and I know it was after I got sober. I wish I had the exact date, but I was I was uh, an anchor at KCAL TV in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. We worked out of the Paramount Studios lot in Hollywood, and I did an interview with this author, Howard Lyman, who was a fourth generation cattle rancher who had gone yes. on Oprah and who had basically, he had gotten very ill and he said, God, if you get me out of this, I'll reveal the horrors of the industry. He survived. He went on Oprah. She said, that just stopped me cold from eating another burger. And then the cattleman mm -hmm. sued her yeah, and sued. he became famous. <laughs> right. And he had a book called Mad Cowboy, and I interviewed him. 
And afterwards, he and his publicist walked up to my cubicle and they said, we hear you're a vegetarian. And I said, yes. And they said, do you eat dairy? And I kind of felt really embarrassed because he had just talked about the horrible things, how they rip the babies away from the mothers and the boys are either put in veal crates or shot or left to die and just the nightmare of it. Yeah. And I kind of hung my head and I said, yes. And they went, liquid meat. They pointed the finger right at my nose. Wow. And at that moment, I went vegan. Now, if they had said, well, I think maybe you should reconsider. And I probably just would have. But the fact that they confronted me, yeah. I responded to that. And I always mention it because I want to thank them for dropping a truth bomb on my head. Now, some people, you know, there's always this. I remember I was at this climate conference. Mm -hmm. uh, I was invited to speak at this climate conference. And the people knew it was about veganism. A lot of them boycotted it. I was down seeing what they were eating at the cafeteria and there were 99% of them eating meat. Wow. And then um, this woman comes up to me and she goes, be soft. They're meat eaters. <laughs> and I thought, well, why the hell are they at a climate conference? They want me to be soft. They're meat eaters. Wow. Like maybe it, it was just so, it was like, <sighs> Wow. I'm trying to think of a good analogy. It was so Be disheartening. Soft. I mean, like they're being on the animals? I mean. <laughs> yeah, like they're being on the animals. They're Be not soft. being soft on the animals. I mean, oh, wow. Yeah. I, I mean, I get it. I was, you know, a meat eater for 41 years. Um, but yeah, sometimes, and everybody needs a different approach. You know, I mean, the way, the way they just spoke to you and, and, you know, you're a, you're a tough lady and you know, you're I'm a New Yorker. Like I, think, I mean, maybe other people wouldn't handle it or they yeah. upset, but I, I think that sometimes look as Greta Thunberg says, our house is on fire. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go into somebody's house and you say, Hey, wake up, there's a fire yeah. and they don't wake up. You finally shake them and say, wake up. Yeah. Our house is on fire. Yeah. I take the same approach. You know, when people ask me about the keto diet or the paleo <laughs> diet, I tell, here's how I explain it. I say, if you want to be a thin corpse, a thin young corpse, go for it. That's the diet for you. And some people get offended by that, but I take the same approach. When, when lives are on the line, you don't pussyfoot around the truth. You tell it like it is. So, yeah, uh, I get Also, it. they've shown statistically, studies show that diets don't work. People almost mm -hmm. invariably regain the weight and then some. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, food is an addiction to a certain degree. I have the dubious honor of being a bit of an expert on addiction because I am a recovering alcoholic and I've written about it in books, mm -hmm. et cetera. Um, willpower is a self-defeating mechanism. Willpower mm -hmm. creates stress, anxiety, resentment. Mm -hmm. That leads to a craving to mm -hmm. break away from the sacrifice, which leads to a binge. Mm -hmm. And that then becomes remorse in the alcoholic. It's usually the next morning they wake up and they go, whoa, who was that? And the remorse wears off and then the whole pattern repeats. So just like you can't, it's very hard to will yourself out of, um, alcoholism. It's really about surrendering to being powerless over alcohol and letting go as opposed to, because when I, when I was in my disease, I, you know, every night I'd say, I'm not going to drink tonight. And I drank. And then when I got help, I said, I don't have to drink tonight. That was the big shift. So I think the same applies to food. If we're telling mm -hmm. people, you know, don't eat meat because and then they go, I'm not going to eat. It's not going to last. But if we say, you know, put on a new pair of glasses, have a psychic shift. You don't have to eat this garbage. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the other thing I was thinking when you, and I'm glad you brought this up when you were talking this morning um, on your show with Amawale and everybody, and you guys were talking about the boycott meat movement. I think one of the most important things is giving someone the alternative, because if you're just taking something away, then they look at it as a sacrifice. But if they have other foods, if they have the alternative and they understand that I can still eat really awesome food and still enjoy myself and have 
all of my favorite things, you know, my favorite comfort foods, but just tweak them a little bit to make them plant-based and you lose none of the flavor, then it's not a sacrifice. And so many people open their mind to it. Yeah. And by the way, this isn't a mimosa. <laughs> it's orange <laughs> juice. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I've also had to look at, examine myself because I'm really about the animals. I mean, in other words, I'm about everything. I'm about saving the planet. That's why I did the documentary mm -hmm. Countdown to Year Zero, which is on Amazon Prime, about how we're going to have an ecological apocalypse by 2026 if we don't transition to a plant-based world. Yeah. And I do believe what's happening now is an intervention by Mother Nature yeah. saying, you know, go to your rooms, think about what you've been doing and come out either a changed species or kaput. Right. Um, and uh, uh, I lost my train of thought there. Um, <laughs> Are you sure? You're sure that's just orange juice? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, I think we were talking about um, yeah, giving people alternatives, giving them oh, a yeah. substitute. Yeah, exactly. So I, I'm really, though, I mean, emotionally, I'm about the animals. I mm -hmm. mean, the idea that I love my animals, I have five companion animals, four dogs and a cat. And the idea of anybody, <clears throat> you know, abusing them, chopping them up, uh, mm -hmm. putting up bolt through their head or whatever the horrors that they do, slitting their throats, hanging them upside down. I would just can't even, well, that's how I feel about the cows and the pigs and the chickens, et cetera. So um, that's where I'm emotionally drawn to this movement. But now that I'm in quarantine, I've really started to eat healthier because uh, even though I do try, I do support restaurants through support and feed, I've donated mm -hmm. to support and feed and continue to donate to support and feed. But um, I just don't have access to go to all the restaurants I did. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to places where there are vegan uh, pastries. And so I'm eating healthier. And honestly, I feel like I've had a bit of a breakthrough. It's not now, I'm not doing it as, okay, I'm going to eat this because it's healthy. I'm, it tastes better. It tastes great. And mm -hmm. so I've incorporated things like goji berries and hemp seeds and uh, chia seeds and... Mm -hmm. Um, overnight oats and um, a lot of fruit and just I've been just out of necessity but now I'm shocked to find that I really like eating like this yeah yeah and you know when you were talking earlier about how this is a a, a moment that we should seize you know it's an opportunity it really is you know I, I was talking about this on a radio show recently and saying, if you look at history and you look at times of war, when meat production was down because, you know, we, we just couldn't afford it. Um, you know, a lot of people were overseas fighting the war. The, you know, the, so the production was down, but also consumption was down because people couldn't afford it. The disease rates followed suit. So if you look at, at the charts, you know, when the, the animal consumption went down, the disease rates followed exactly. And I think that we're going to look back on this and we're going to see the same thing. So well, yeah. Hopefully, and hopefully it doesn't go back up. I mean, yeah. hopefully some of these companies will go bankrupt. And that's, yeah. that's what I was saying to, we were discussing the intersection uh, of Black Lives Matter and uh, veganism, because mm -hmm. um, African Americans are the fastest growing demographic that are going vegan in the general population wow. of the United States. And uh, I was making the point that money talks in the society and that consumers need to take the power back with their dollars. Mm -hmm. And that every purchase is a political purchase as well as uh, and it's an environmental purchase and a moral purchase, but just not just a food purchase. So to withdraw our dollars from the companies that are killing us, killing the slaughterhouse workers, uh, and and that would get everybody's attention faster than anything else because the, these giant companies, they could be plant-based. You could name the biggest fast food companies in the world. If they wanted to be, they could be 100% plant-based mm -hmm. and we could be a lot healthier. But it's really going to take the consumers, they respond to consumer demand. That's why they do tests. That's why McDonald's did the test of the uh, PLT, the plant lettuce and tomato at, mm -hmm. in Canada. And they mm -hmm. just ended it. 
Uh, and then some people said, oh, they ended their test. Well, it, it was a test with a beginning and an end of the Beyond Meat Burger. And so mm -hmm. that doesn't mean just because they ended their test, because it had an end date when they started it. Right. It doesn't mean that, that they're not going to go forward. I, I really feel like they're, it's incumbent upon them to go forward now. Yeah, uh, absolutely. For, and their I don't, own, I don't... for their own survival. I mean, yeah. here's the thing. Business people, if you're watching this, I don't care what your next quarter's earnings are. Nobody's going to have any earnings if the if planet becomes too hot to support human life, dummies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we need to stop with this trickle-down economics and, and thinking that corporations save the world. No, people save the world, you know. People have to have money to make purchases and they have to be alive <laughs> to make purchases exactly. so yeah you got to start at the grassroots with the people and feed them and keep them alive and healthy so they can buy your products so well yeah. we also need to you know take food production into our hands i'm i'm a city girl i was born in midtown manhattan i grew up across the street from carnegie hall so it's not a normal thing for me to think about a vertical garden. Mm -hmm. But I interviewed lettucegrow.com and I was so taken with their vases. You can get small, medium, large. And I have a deck. I thought, I want to put that. I haven't done it yet, but I'm getting very mm -hmm. close. I have to have some kind of breakthrough. But yeah. this is what we really need. We need a lot of people to start growing their own vegetables and you can do it vertically. Yeah. So that's another thing we can do. Yeah. Yeah. There's people doing them on their rooftops. I mean, yeah, it's becoming really great. And I mean, it's so much healthier and it's literally like growing money. You know, think about how much money you spend on produce, especially as a vegan. <laughs> I mean, that's the bulk of, of most of our food bills every month. So you have to think of how much money you can save. They, they lay it out. Cash. They actually lay it out at lettucegrow.com. They can tell you, you know, you can save X, Y, Z. Oh. And uh, it, it looks like fun. I've, I've got to do it every day. I say, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So I will do it eventually. Yeah, I know. I bought two, two raised planter boxes and I, <laughs> about two months ago, they haven't come out of the box yet, but they were, they're going to. <laughs> All right. So you're probably a city together. girl too. You're a city girl too. <laughs> I once, I wanted to move to the country. And somebody yeah. said, you're going to last 45 minutes in the country. The second you go somewhere and they don't have like whatever cashew, organic cashew yeah. milk unsweetened, <laughs> you're going to have a breakdown. I was like, okay, but no it's problem. becoming so much more prevalent, you know, even in places that I never imagined. I mean, I'm finding Beyond Meat products and Impossible Burger meat at regular grocery stores now. Oh yeah, you know, for sure. Totally. Right in the meat section. It's, yeah. it's really difficult for me because, well, I'm not going to, now I'm in Instacart land, but mm -hmm. when I was going to the grocery stores, it was very hard for me to, I never used to go to those sections. I would just, I would literally go like this, Yeah. but <laughs> I felt for the animals, I'm going to go in there and grab that beyond meat or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever the one was there. Uh, and they put it right in the meat section because it looks like exactly like meat. Mm -hmm. So, um, JBS, which is one of the biggest uh, meat producers in the world, if not the biggest, uh, has a whole vegan line. In fact, uh, our vegan attorney who has a show, mm -hmm. Carissa Kranz, on the Jane Unchained News Network, she just certified them vegan. So mm -hmm. uh, people have tasted it and said it tastes so much like meat mm -hmm. that vegans can hardly eat it. Good. We're, it's not aimed for vegans. It's aimed for non-vegans who, who are trying to get off meat. Right. So... Um, they know, all of these companies know. The second mm -hmm. consumers say, we're done, we're boy meat's dead. Mm -hmm. Boycott meat. Some publicist sent me a pitch for something about hot dogs, and then they said, or veggie dogs in parentheses, and I just responded, hashtag boycott meat. <laughs> that's it, sorry lady. Yeah. Buzz off. <laughs> Scram. Funny. Yeah. I would think they would know better reaching out to you. <laughs> uh, these are, you know, they're, they're doing thousands of people at once. Yeah. But, oh, um, yeah. 
people. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, we're doing a lot and I hope everybody does sign up to janeunchained.com too. Boy, we're giving you a lot of homework assignments, but we yeah. really are like a community. And so you go to janeunchained.com, sign up. You can go to amazon.com and get support and feed our show. New Day New Chef Support and Feed Edition, but if you put in Support and Feed, it pops up. And, uh, you know, then the plant-based neighbor. Those are our three big initiatives along with that boycott meat. Is that enough or should, should I add a couple no, yeah. more on there? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I mean, I have so many links in there, but it, no, this is all awesome. So this is great stuff. And then the, the another thing I want to ask you about, which isn't about... Um, anything you have going on, but I wanted to get your take and see if you even were aware of what was going on with uh, Slutty Vegan. I don't know no. if you've heard. Um, no, I haven't. So there... Sh- I don't know if I could comment because I, I, I've i never even thought put those two words together. Oh. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> she, she has a restaurant, I believe it's in Georgia, if I'm uh-huh. not mistaken, and she... Um, announced that she was going to be helping out the family of, um, gosh, I can't remember his name, the gentleman who was killed by the police down there. Um, he was the, the young guy who had fallen asleep in his car. Oh, the yeah. Through, oh, and then was the, he the V? No, no, that was the, okay, I understand. No, yeah, Atlanta, he got yeah. into the skirmish okay. with the cop yeah, and the yeah. cop shot him in the back yeah. and killed him. Mm-hmm. So she announced that she was going, because he had children, he had multiple children. She announced that she was going to be helping his children, I believe with their college education fund or something like that, or she was buying a car for their family, maybe both. I heard both stories. I'm not sure which one is true or if they're both true. Um, as a result, she faced a lot of backlash. And so there were a lot of white supremacists who apparently took to Yelp and different you know, pages online and started giving her one star reviews. On and her, is this a book or a show? No, or? she has a restaurant called uh-huh. the Slutty Vegan in, uh-huh. in, yeah, in Georgia. In so Georgia. I'm glad, I'm glad I'm bringing it up to you because I really want to support her in too. some way because she's really taking a beating down there. And apparently, I mean. Are the people, restaurants even open down there? I don't know. Uh, I know those states were kind of slow to close. Um, I think that she was primarily doing takeout, mm, but okay. and so, but like all all restaurants right now, you know, they're all struggling. And well, that's so, that's terrible. Yeah. We want to support. You know, that's why we do support and feed. In fact, there should be a support and feed Atlanta, uh, yeah. which is a great way to help because then even if people can't go to the restaurant or even if they're too far away to, I can help a restaurant mm-hmm. anywhere in Philadelphia. Uh, mm-hmm. through support and feed, just oh, through the nice. general fund. But Atlanta, on support and feed, there is a template for starting it in your city. Oh, okay. so They're going to try to start this all around the world. So one oh, thing no. we can do is start support and feed Atlanta, because I okay. have been to Atlanta many times for work, and I used to literally go to one place, and that was Soul Food, the Soul mm-hmm. Food vegan place, yeah, which is great. In uh, I think it was like the Highlands near Little Five Points. And uh, so uh, I know that there's not a huge amount of vegan restaurants in mm-hmm. Atlanta, and we want to make sure that those vegan restaurants that are there don't close. Yes. And especially if she's being targeted, that's terrible. Yeah. So yeah. let's support her. And um, maybe you could facilitate her signing up to support and feed and getting okay. all the vegan restaurants like Vegan Soul. And there's a couple there. And that way, mm-hmm. you know, hopefully she can get some help. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's hurting her. So I know there's a push to try to help her out right now because she, you know, she just tried to do something nice um, for kids that are now left without a father and she's being yeah. targeted for it. So, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Not good. Terrible. Terrible. Yeah. yeah. So, well, I know we're, we're getting close to an hour and I, I know you're super busy and I don't want to keep you too long. So is there anything else that you want everybody to know or think about or do um, well, for any I, cause? Yeah. I think along the lines of what we've discussed, it's super important for vegans and environmentalists and anybody who wants to save the planet, support vegan restaurants right now. 
I go out of my way to order in uh, mm -hmm. vegan products, uh, support vegan restaurants. And then if I really don't feel like, okay, it's out of my range or whatever, I'm going to donate to support and feed. And I just hope that you know, you check out the show because it's a lot of fun. It's for a good cause. Mm -hmm. We're a nonprofit. We don't do any of this. We didn't sell the show. We made it and gave it. So um, I do feel this is an opportunity. Everybody needs to step up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Every vegan, it's not enough. Uh, vegans, don't be saying, I don't like social media. That's all we got. <laughs> yeah. TV is owned by the, the other side. So yeah. use your social media every time. Take a picture. This is the most powerful weapon you have. I shouldn't even say weapon. That's old thinking. The most powerful tool you have to change the world. Yeah. Everything you do, you could videotape your lunch and put it on YouTube. Get all the social media accounts. I have like 12,000 people on LinkedIn. People say, well, wh who do you accept? I say, anybody who eats food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not picky. Yeah. Food. Yeah. I'm going to accept you on LinkedIn. Yeah. And you know, and if you had a million people giving a dollar a month, oh my God, you know, yeah. it's huge. Yeah. Right. We, exactly. Who can't afford a dollar. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And yeah. that's why I try not to, you know, do the giant fundraisers and things because A, they cost money to put on. But mm -hmm. B, I think that the, the solution would be for everybody just to give a little bit. And um, so I do feel like we're at a turning point, but you know, momentum is, is an interesting thing. You get this momentum, which we've got. And if you don't, if you don't uh, get to that finish line, it can go back in the other direction. Yeah. So we need to we really step it up vegans. <laughs> yes. Everybody help out just a little bit and oh my, we could change the world. We yeah. need to change the world. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. It, it, go on to vegan sites like Jane Unchained, Facebook and share out the content. Right there, you hit yeah. share. Throw, yeah. uh, throw a watch party. You know, there's a million things you can do. Yeah. And get on social media. You know, these, these folks who say, well, oh, I don't like Facebook. You know what? It's not perfect, I admit, but yeah. it's our way of getting the information out there. Facebook, yeah. Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Tabitha Brown got 12 million views on her carrot bacon, and now she's got a wow. show with Ellen. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. And, you know, and the people who say, oh, well, I don't like Facebook because they've, they, of this or that they they're, they're allowing this content they're allowing that content let me tell you you start putting restrictions on who can say what and who can post what it's gonna harm all of us that's a slippery slope so there's a lot that's of things they don't agree that's with that i see but you know what uh you, you start censoring people and it's gonna be people like you and people like me next you know, because they don't want to hear about veganism or, you know. <laughs> We're censored on mainstream media. They will not talk about our subject because they okay. are beholden to their advertisers. Meat, oh, yeah. dairy, pharmaceuticals. Yeah. yeah, which is our our industry, really. It's our product. I mean, with so much of our tax dollars going into it, it's really our companies, you know, but yeah. Terrible. I, like I tell people, we're literally paying to kill ourselves. <laughs> so, yes, we are. It's crazy. It's really insane when you think about it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Jane. I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you taking this hour out of your very busy day to come on and talk and share everything with everybody. Um, and to be here with me. And I am actually, for anybody watching, I'm going to be on Jane's show next Monday. So we will be together again on Jane Unchained. For the hour. So now I'm going to learn all about you and all yeah. the amazing things that you're doing. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you, my dear. I'm considered an honor and privilege to be on your show. And um, you. I really appreciate it. Thank you so, so much. So, and thank you all for watching and as always like, subscribe, share all that good stuff so we can keep building an army and get the word out there and change the world. So thanks again, Jane. Thank you. It's been fun. Yeah, you too.
And I'd love to have you back anytime you, you'd like to come on. All right. Sounds good. All right. So we'll okay. talk Monday. Okay. Take All care. All right, my dear. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching Plants and Politics. The only way to take our country and power back is to spread the truth and build an army. So remember to like, follow, subscribe, and share on Facebook, YouTube, and wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks again.